Hey everybody, good morning, and we are on time. Woo! For once, a welcome to uh, Reaper Toolbox Pro Tips with your host, Anne, and disembodied voice, Justin. And, of course, chat. Hi, chat! How are y'all? Looking at the highs. Yep, it's race time. This might be the last day of race for a while. I might do the back of her at some point. It's it's a shame not to, like, finish her out because, really, she's so close to done. These are so, like I said, this is a super fast technique. And if I wasn't taking such care with blending, it would have been even faster. It's really easy to get a good, a good effect with this technique and, you know, have some really kind of cool-looking stuff, even if you're painting an army. Yo, everybody. Um, yeah, we're having an issue with my volume, apparently, um, which I'm not certain about because I didn't alter anything, so I'm not sure what's up. Um, I could switch my stuff in OBS, but it's up to Justin. He is our sound technician. Yeah, you could switch it. So that's – I was really hoping it was just a me problem this morning. Let's see. Yeah, the Yeti mm. bars look a little bit – I mean, I could up it a little bit in um, in OBS if you want, Justin. I mean, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Do that. Right, let's, let's, let's start with that. Let's see if it will work, guys. Hold on. Oops. Sorry, right, I, Shadow. I spooked it by like 7 or 8%. What's up? Is this okay? Is this better? That did definitely markedly increase for me. All right, good. They said you're louder. Hopefully, but is she is she loud enough, guys? Is the question. Yeah, can you hear? I I am gonna scooch over just a little bit here. Apparently, I'm really loud. Okay, I'm just gonna talk. Well, really we know like we this. know that's Justin. Justin's loud and proud. I'll Justin. just I'll just whisper from now on. <laughs> Well, I don't want to waste a lot of stream. Like, uh, I mean, the question is, can you guys hear me? If you can hear me, then we're good. If you can't hear me, then we're then we're you know not good. Um, just some people say Justin volume is perfect, and some say Justin is like too loud. Um, so what other things could we tweak quickly, Justin? To uh, do you want me to pop my uh, turn my gain up a little bit I, more? Or do you not want to? I would. Uh, you could you could turn it up a little bit more, but I would uh, go into your your desktop audio and reduce that a bit so you can bring me down just a hair. Okay, desktop audio speakers, is that what we're looking at? Yes, it should be, when I talk, it should be the one that bounces. Oh, I don't know how to get to that more. Um, I've got two apps using my microphone, hold on. Uh, I've got microphone. I'm trying to find, I don't even know wh what to look at to do this. This is why this is like, don't, let's not like mess with it guys. Cause uh, honestly, Justin would have to walk me through where to find the actual, cause I can go to my little like, you know, speaker icon in my desktop tray, but I don't know where to find any bars or anything. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant in, I'm sorry. That was my bad. I meant in OBS. Oh, in OBS. I see. All right. So yeah, the uh, little slider in OBS for okay. speakers or desktop. Let, I'm not using, I don't think I'm using any. Desktop audio, I see it. All right, let me pop that up. Or do you want it down? Where you said down. It? We want that down. Yeah. Okay. Bring it down like a couple of decibels. Okay, I think I did. All right. Am I a uh, reasonable volume now, guys? Not blowing your ears out. Is Justin good? Good morning. Yeah, we're trying to fix sound, Francis, and everybody who is coming in. I was apparently a bit low. And Justin was way loud. And we're not sure what happened because we didn't change anything from yesterday. So Anne is audible, but Justin is definitely louder. I can pop him down a couple more. Um, Flawed Angel. Not sure about good online retailers in Canada selling Reaper paint. Um, we did. We were working with at least one distributor. But as far as the retailers that distributor serves, I'm not certain. Justin's volume is perfect. Okay. Well then, we'll. Uh... Nico says I'm still quiet though, and I don't know what to do about that. All right. Yeah, my volume is better. Uh, I would say that the same slider that's in OBS. If you have room to bump it some more, bump it. Um. Oh. Okay. The and the and slider, the Yeti slider. Correct. Correct. Let me find my Yeti. There's my Yeti. Oh, did you have a Windows update? Oh, I yes, I did. I know what the problem is. All oh. right. Um. I know exactly what the problem is. Damn you, Windows. Um, 
T this is a quick fix. Yeah. If you would go to the tray in the bottom. Okay. Yep. Uh, right. Let's see. Go to mixer. What's the mixer icon look like? It's the the little speaker. If, if you right click the speaker, you should be able to go to mixer. Oh, okay. Uh, I've got open sound settings, open volume mixer. Open open sound settings. Okay. Opening sound settings. Got it. Uh, okay, then you, what you want is advanced sound settings for the oh, Yeti. Oh, I see what I got. The... I see what I've got. It switched my input device. Oh, Hold okay. On. There we now, go. Now see what we got. Hold on. Let me make sure that it's going to save that. I just switched my input device to the Yeti instead of... Uh, it was trying to use the camera, of all things. That makes a lot of sense. That's why your Discord sounds so good, because your Discord is actually still your Yeti. Right. Okay, guys, how does that <clears throat> how does that sound? Yeah, Izzy, it's uh, it's dumb that way. I wish I could just deactivate the sound on my camera because it's like probably set at a really low volume. It's always a Windows update. No, the and other... Crying Eye says it's still low, even though I changed my input device. That's that's because I think you have to go to uh, advanced sound settings on there and go to device volume, like uh, Gimli was saying there. Okay. Because what it'll do is when it updates, it resets it to fifty percent, which is stupid. So I don't I understand to... why anyone oh, would want it. It that. actually reset it to forty. Oh, all right, there you go. On. Even worse. Hold on. Crank it all the way up. Well, I'm gonna crank it up to seventy-five and see. I don't want to blow out people because we know I lo I'm loud. Okay, guys, now it's at seventy-five. How about now? Can you hear me now? Let's just you know do the Verizon commercial guy. All right, yay! Higher, go higher, says Shadow Spawn. He wants even more. All right, I'm gonna bump it up to 85. I typically bump my Windows audio all the way to 100 and adjust it on all my other. Ah, uh... uh, that makes sense. How about now? How yeah, about you're now? Yeah, you're definitely. I gotta bring you down in Discord now, personally. So yeah, okay. yeah, that sounds great. Does it go to 11? No, you guys do not want me at 11. Trust me, I'm so loud. All right. My theater-trained voice is, is plenty penetrating without going to 111. All right, that's good. That's at 90, so I like that. That's good. All right, well, now I learned something, so. We'll see if I retain it, because as we were talking about, brain RAM and brain, brain hard drive space are, like, you know, at a premium these days. Sweet. Well, now we troubleshot that. Woohoo! We only wasted uh, eight minutes. <laughs> I was so trying so hard to be on time. Diamond Perfect. Windows. It's all Windows fault. Yeah, I 90%. I'm, I'm just, I have a really penetrating voice, Gimli, so I never like to crank anything to 100 because I, I really project when I talk. So I'm usually complained at that I am too loud, even in person. <laughs> All right, ha, normal time. I try to start at 35, but yeah, we've wasted some time. All right, I guess now we have to get out of Techland and into Banshee Land or Wraith Land or whatever the heck land we are. And um, I actually have great news for that that was texted to me by Rhonda, by the way. Oh, yeah? The Cheap Joe's Art Supply palette, the well palette that you use. Yeah. Is on sale for half off. It's like on sale for five bucks right now. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been on sale for a little while now. Apparently, they're uh, seeing some sales, so they're continuing their sale. But yeah, you should uh, totally go over to Cheap Joe's Art Supply if you want uh, my well palette, which is, uh, let me zoom out. Sorry, I was... I've been doing uh, zooming in so much lately that I set up little sticky snakes to uh, remind me where to keep my uh, my wraith. But yes, if you want my well palette, the 28 well one with the small wells, which is really ideal for miniature painting, it is cheap right now at Cheap Joe's, even cheaper than usual. Um, so yeah, if you want to like learn to use paint, like I use, learn, like I typically paint, then uh, it is now on sale. Go go fetch it. Um, of course, there's extra shipping, so if you have a friend who also wants one, you could get, get together. Uh, uh, I am doing a search for cherry cola hair color uh, and looking for images. Oh, yeah, that's the color. Wow, Succubus Kiss is really that color. Like, really it is. Like, that's Succubus Kiss. <laughs> like, like, seriously, it's Succubus Kiss, guys. Like, I don't really need to do anything, do I? Like, you know, this is the right color. <laughs> Actually, if we look at our hair color very closely, you can see it has some brighter red highlights, and it also has some darker purpler shadows. So that is what we will need to do. And also, you can look at the actual highlights, um, which are actually a pinkish color, 
uh, which is white mixed in probably to our red or our succubus kiss. So we'll have to like figure that out. But that is the hair color I was going for. Goth, goth girl red, AKA succubus kiss. Little did, little did Ron know he could have named it goth girl red instead of succubus kiss. Ah, Ron, the opportunities we've missed. Um, so yeah, I'll keep that up on my phone so that I can have it for uh, reference, but it's probably just going to be mixing some clear red into the succubus kiss to get those highlights. Uh, in the meantime, though, I want to get the uh, skin tone going on here. Because we've got our black, and I really am annoyed at our skin tone looking so flat, so we're going to use our tan skin. Then we're going to use our tan skin there. So we've got about four drops of tan skin just mixed up just for blending. I'm going to thin it with at least two drops of water so that it's about two to one, which is my base level. I would say it's my base starting level when I'm dealing with layering or blending or anything. Need to have enough water in it for, to make it a little translucent. And then you can tune it from there. And then I'm going to add, I'm not going to add um, just white to my skin color. I'm going to add white and a little bit of my Phantom Glow. Because remember we talked yesterday about light sourcing and how the light around her is uh, going to be this teal color probably, right? Because she's probably glowing or maybe she's got a spectral effect around her. So it's going to have some teal in it. So I am going to put some white in there and then I'm going to put a little bit of Phantom Glow. It's going to mute out the color of the skin a little bit. But that's all right. We're working on a transition here. You could do it in a couple different ways, but I want to see what happens when I mix my Phantom Glow into my uh, tan skin. See how it goes. It's going to go a little greenish. Yeah, that's about right. I need it to go lighter now. So I'm going to add another drop of white. I'm going to bring this down. It's the only problem with my, uh, my Gatekeeper uh, snake putty here is that it makes it hard to just slide the palette down. So that's tan skin, and then I've got this weird color here that is tan skin plus a drop of spectral phantom glow, sorry. But I want it to be lighter. <clears throat> and the reason I'm doing this is that if I'm going to bring my highlights on the skin tones up to a pure, here, let me get up to a pure spectral plus white mix, then I want to have a transition color. Even though that transition color looks really weird right now, Nonetheless, it is a transition color. It has both uh, spectral or phantom glow and tan skin in it, which means it's going to work better with each. So now what I can do further, so there's a highlight color for the light source. What I can do further is I can add a little bit of this into here, knocking it down just a tad. And I can add a little bit of this into here bring it up just a tad. So essentially what I just did is I muted very, very, very slightly. I muted my tan skin and I muted my um, highlight color, my Phantom Glow Plus White, by adding a little bit of this mixture into it. So if the, the fact is that you can make a blend between any two colors in the world. I don't care what they are. You can make a workable blend if you're willing to work at increments like this and use a mix of color. You could also just use steadily translucent layers and do it that way. It is totally workable that way. But this is a different way to do it. So, so yeah, so this is what I'm playing with. And we will see. Yeah, I never could dye my hair. It's just, it's too much work to keep it up, as you say. Now, you can kind of see where I have layered my, um, my tan skin over the Phantom Glow yesterday is actually really close to this color. So it's visually giving us the same effect. Now I added white to both of these and that means I'm going to have to add a lot more water to make it transition well. And I might want a little bit more there. There. And I'm going to get everything in focus now that I've showed you guys that those mixes. Let's get everything back in focus and fix focus. Come here, Wraithlet. You're going to go over here. I'm going to paint my palette. There. There we are. Alrighty. Mix up these colors. I do need to bring my tan skin uh, more up under her hair and stuff. I have uh, not filled in everything. Yeah, I always liked my hair color too much to dye it. I like it even more now that I'm going with silver. I like my silver streaks an awful lot.
I'm hoping my hair grays out like my mom's is because hers is perfect. Hers is like this silver gold mix that's really pretty. I am not the whole dye your hair when you start getting gray hairs person. That's not me. I don't know if I'll be that person. The problem is I don't really have any hair. I just right. have a beard. Yeah, you are unfortunately that that person who I have like told David, please, please do not be Justin, because I really don't want David to like shave his head. I know guys do it because they hate seeing themselves going bald, but I mean, I would honestly rather see the baldness than see the shaved head. So few guys look good in shaved head. So it's like, are you, are you saying I don't look good with a shaved head? Eh? I don't know. I didn't. I don't remember seeing you with hair, so I can't really compare. Like oh, I think you. I think you've had a shaved head ever since I've known you. Or or if I if I really you know like we weren't we didn't know each other. We weren't really close when you were younger when I started at Reaper. So I don't That's remember. Right. Yeah, back then it was uh, it was you know basically all manual labor. So yeah, yeah. So I didn't really we didn't cross streams at Reapers really till now. So let's see here. I love the silver. Oh, Izzy, I, I've got the silver at the temple thing. I love it. I love it. The silver wings. That's fantastic. You should totally be happy with that. Silver at the temples is fantastic. I don't see it um, enough on women. I guess a lot of women do dye their hair when they start going gray, which is a shame because I think the silver temples look good on guys and they look like as good on women. Do you think I could pull off the silver temple look if I leave my gr like beard gray towards the top of my ear? Huh, I don't know. That's a good question. You might have to experiment. <laughs> I still have never gotten a, a gray hair, so as soon as I get one, I'll let you guys know. Yeah. Wow, you haven't been working for Reaper long enough, Justin. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm actually 19. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So funny. Despite Ed's best efforts, Justin has yet to gain a gray hair, guys. All right, so I'm pretty much just highlighting up the skin, but I'm using that off color and my phantom color to uh, highlight it. So I'm uh, just kind of accentuating like under the navel here, um, the top of the rib cage there, up here next to the bikini. And I'm giving it, um, once you notice that once I give it highlights and shadows, it is starting to look more corporeal. I am leaving, uh, I decided to leave some of this phantom glow in the shadow here. I might change my mind on that, but so far I like it. Um, it's still giving us kind of the reflection of this color all around. Uh, it's kind of an under reflection of color from the glow of the wraith herself. So I'm going to keep it. Um, I'm liking this so far, so I'm going to keep moving and do the probably do the face. I do want to highlight pretty sharply under the navel if I want to suggest volume. It's when you start like highlighting and shading these skin tone, like filled in parts of her and the cloth, that's when you start really suggesting volume. And that's when she really starts to look corporeal, like she's not a spirit. Um, so oh, I got a little bit too strong there. I'm just going to wipe it off water if you don't like something you do just grab a brush full of water and wipe it off the part that's already cured isn't going to come up when you do that there all right we'll leave that for now let's do her face let's see here yeah i like the midriff and how it's kind of looking at this point uh, oh thank you mighty garrett subscribe for twitch prime in two months so you're new or at least you're new to subbing hi welcome Awesome. Do, 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 do. Ha ha. Alrighty, let's see here. Let's see what I can do with this kind of weird off color highlighting. And what this is also doing by choosing to highlight with a color that I've mixed this phantom glow into so that it's really quite grayed out and muted is um, I'm taking down the warmth of, warmth of her skin tone. And I want to do that because she's a ghost. So it's the same problem I mentioned about um, using red hair, uh, using a traditional red hair color with her, which would be very orange, very vibrant, very full of life. Um, she is dead, so I don't necessarily want to do that. So I want to use colder, more muted versions of any color 
that I would normally use. So in this case, I'm starting with tan skin because tan skin is a really good, I've mentioned this before, it's the most versatile skin tone in our entire line. It's got a fair amount of saturation in it if you just deal with it itself, but it's still muted enough to go in these directions when I want it to. Like, it's very easy to mute out. It's like got just enough like or oxide pigment in it to keep it warm so it looks alive if you don't add anything to it but you can take it in this sort of direction and gray it out and still use it as a base so tan skin 9044 most useful base for doing anything you want with skin color it's it's very definitely skin colored you can see how close it is to some i'm i'm pinker because i'm very pink but but you can see there on my knuckles like it's my skin tone is a lighter version of tan skin technically i'm probably tan skin highlight um and the red would be more like a rosy skin. But it's a very convincing skin color. It really was the core of the entire skin color line um, when I first like did like the core colors. That was like, this is, this is skin, right? The, this color. Um, and so that's why I chose to use it because some of the other skin colors that I could have started with would have been convincing skin colors, but would have gone to pieces when I tried to add this blue green to them. Um, whereas this really works. Lady Dyer Doggo, thank you for the resub. Yay! Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, you worked hard for your gray hair. <laughs> exactly. It took many years of me working at Reaper to build up this amount of gray hair. I, I'm quite proud of it. I'm proud that I survived. <laughs> no, no, I can't say that. Reaper was so much more fun. Like, I can't even imagine the number of gray hairs I would have if I was had still been working in corporate America all those 17 years. No, thank you. No matter how crazy life gets with Ed and the gang, uh, it's still better than working for the credit bureau I used to work for. All right. So I'm putting my highlights in traditional places. I do need to deal with her mouth. And since she is a, uh, a wraith, I'm probably going to line it in black and do it in succubus kiss. Um, so I'm going to actually get some black out here. This is where... This is where the fact that I'm, you know, I'm using pure black because she's a wraith. I want her to look very, very dead. I don't mind high drama. I'm going to bring her skin tone up significantly so it's quite pale, just like her stomach is reading right now. And I don't mind going black with her eyeliner and black with her mouth, um, at least the line around her mouth. So I'm going to get a little bit of pure black out. I'm probably going to add some flow improver mix to it. Um, in addition to water, because I want it to, I'm going to be doing precise lines because I'm going to line the mouth and kind of suggest the upper lip there. And then I'm going to put a line around the lower lip to bring it out, define it. Nothing like black lipstick. lipstick. Yeah, it really depends on the company you're working for, right, Real Chibi? Like I have a friend who works for Sonic in their cybersecurity department. And Sonic is apparently, Sonic is the Sonic drive through by the way, fast food. But apparently their company is just so nice to work for. Like they really spend time on making their corporate culture non-toxic and uh, really just seem to be an exemplary place to work. She's worked for them for many years now. Alrighty, time to try to line this mouth. Now, because we're dealing with Bob, and probably Julie a little bit. Um, we actually do have a defined upper lip here. She has actually kind of put it into the sculpt, or he rather has. Um, so I'm going to try to just line the mouth and see how much of that I can get. You can see those two peaks, maybe. She kind of has a frowny face on, so it's like... Yeah, my dad wanted me to go into accounting and finance because that was what, what was he was in, Izzy. He was doomed to disappointment. <laughs> I did work. I worked at, at a bank, a credit union, and at Equifax. So a massive credit bureau. Um, and uh, yeah, no thanks. No thanks. The best thing you can say about those jobs usually is like sometimes you get to work with some cool people, but that's true in any job. And so... I don't feel like it was a selling point. All right, so we've got a line around the mouth. Um, right now, Maris, I'm probably at, I'm gonna guess this is around, I put about the same amount of, of Reaper Flow Improver in as I put in uh, water, and it's probably between two to one to one to one. It's quite thin. If you look at it here on camera, you can see how thin it is, you can see through it. 
Now, I want that because I'm I'm trying to like not make mistakes, but you know, you could go with a more solid line and still get thin lines. Um, thin lines start being able to do thinner lines starts around three to one paint to water. Um, and usually I do not add extra flow improver, but because I'm trying to be pretty precise here, I figured it couldn't hurt. There is flow improver inside every Reaper Master Series paint. We add it to the mix when we are mixing it every batch. So you don't need the extra flow improver, but if you're trying to do really fine work, eh, it can't hurt. Now I kind of blurfed a little, but that's okay. And this is why I didn't finish out the face before doing this, guys. That way if I blurf, like this little bit under her chin, I can thin down this line by going back in with my base color. But I want that defined lower lip. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's everybody's, obviously there's no absolutes when it comes to employers, right? Some people will have a great experience at a company and some people won't. And a lot of times that'll be like their experience with their coworkers or their supervisor, you know, that can change a lot. If you work for a company that a lot of people don't like, but you have an excellent supervisor, you could end up really liking your time there. So it always varies, right? So you can't really impun any given company. All right, so let's see here. I'm gonna block in her eyes. She has very narrow eyes. Now, I may have to reverse this if I decide to, decide to give her glowing eyes, but if I decide to give her anything else. Uh-oh, went too dark, went too down, too down on the face. So grab some water and scrub. See, you can just take that right up. Got too far down on her cheekbone, didn't didn't hit high enough up on the eye. Was doing it at an odd angle, so I couldn't see very well. Sometimes for the camera, you're just like, eek. And also, since I have this black open, I may as well use it to line around her hair. Because again, this is corporeal, so we don't mind if we have shadows to give it body. And uh, so I can line around the locks of hair and line around her face to make her face really stand out if you put that black line even though the hair is dark you can still get more mileage lining around it oh no well i feel kind of bad for the postal service these days they've been kind of like run gone through the ringer a bit what with uh, certain people in government wanting to kind of defund them and go private sector with all of our mail. But that's, I don't know, it's not a great solution. So, I don't know. I mean, the Postal Service certainly isn't making money, but unfortunately a lot of that has to do with um, rules about pensions and things like that, by my understanding. So I don't, I, I understand the Postal Service has some challenges these days. Let's just say that. All right, we got that. Oh, wow. Yeah, sad, sad for this final res uh, Amazon blurf. It happens. I mean, I look at how much, how much like traffic, how much uh, volume things like UPS and Amazon and the postal service like do every day and still like 99.5% of it has no, no problems. And I'm, I'm loath to criticize them too harshly. What I don't like is if they say it's delivered and it's not, but usually Amazon is pretty good about saying, Oh, okay. We delivered it the wrong place. Fine. Have a new one. All right, let's get this. Ah, I blurfed again. Brush control. I needed uh my sleep was not awesome, according to my Fitbit. I think my Fitbit may have been right. All right. Well, that's not bad. I do need a little bit more to narrow it. So if you if you get, make the eye too big, you can always take your base coat in and narrow it down. That's the easiest way to do it. Instead of um, coming in and trying to paint over it and redraw it, um, using your skin tone to uh, narrow it down to where it was should be is uh, a better and easier solution and can let you get a finer line or a smaller area. 
kind of like her eyes just dead black. I don't know. We'll see. Well, as long as nothing was injured in the crushing of your box, Shadow Spawn. Let's get this one. This one is a very narrow eye, but... There we go, much better. All right, and that's okay. And I need to get Succubus Kiss on that lip. But yeah, the more precisely you can draw little things, the better. And the only way to get that better um, is to practice, um, is to do stuff like lining, which gives you a lot better control over time. So never diss lining technique. It is... Uh, it is an excellent way to gain more brush control so that you can do little tiny things like this with confidence. I have good days and bad days too. It's worth mentioning. Even when you're a good painter or when you've improved, you'll do, you'll have a day where trying to paint the mouth on something is just like, no, no way. Um, and it's not a reflection on your talent. It's just like, maybe your muscles are tired or maybe you just don't have great motor that day, or maybe you could have slept a little better. So be forgiving with yourself and just, you know, get, maybe put it down and work on a different project and then come back to it. Hmm. What do you mean when that, what, when you would just have like a bad day, just back off it and go do something else. Work on a different project that you're not doing fine work on. There's going to be days when your muscles are just like not up for fine work and that's okay. That's all right. So let's see here. I'm using some clear red. I'm mixing it into my succubus kiss to see what I can get. I may have to add a tiny touch of white to get this to look good as a uh, highlight on her hair and her lip. I'm going to use the same highlights on her hair and her lip. Um, it's not open, Skelsey, at all. It's just that what you see, that dark line, is her upper lip. There's an upper lip and a lower lip. She, has, she doesn't have a mouth open. And what I do when I highlight it is I'm going to bring the highlight up pretty high on that lower lip ideally if my if my hands will cooperate and uh that will mean that that's how you pretty much deal with that um if a mouth is open it's dark that's it at 28 millimeter you're not going to suggest color you shouldn't if if you were looking at a person this big like standing you know across a parking lot from you is how big that would be uh if they opened their mouth you would see a dark blob and that's what you should do Yeah. Well, just move to something bigger, like base coat, you know, or do textures that are not very, you know, precise. Or all you all all you're seeing if you're blurfing on little things is a lack of fine motor. So work on something that doesn't require you to be as fine. And you'll be fine. In fact, it could be just that you need to warm up. So that after you work on something that's bigger, your motor skill, your fine motor might be fine. Like you could give it a try and see how it is. So I've mixed up a kind of a nice, pretty um, soft pink. This is a mixture of a little bit of clear red added to Succubus Kiss with a little bit of white. I'm going to see if I like it as a hair highlight. I may end up looking, this, this puddle is actually clear red with a little bit of Succubus Kiss in it. Um, and I may go more with that as a glaze once I uh, bring in some highlights on this hair. Uh, one second... Um, for the, for the lips, you mean to a high gloss, um, on the lips, yeah, uh, you should actually on this, I mean, on this sort of mini or on any, like I've seen it done a lot on female minis with tiny pinpoints of pure white. Uh, I've seen Marika do it. I've seen Jennifer do it, um, to, uh, just bring out that lower lip and make it look like glossy lipstick. Yep. More in Mac Styles. Yeah. Oh, Shadow Raven. I'm sure I do all sorts of things that other people will go, ah. Um, you just need to do a light coat. You don't need to get it perfectly solid, I'm groaning, um, to get the tooth benefit. I mean, if you get a perfectly solid coat, I mean, the benefit is obviously you don't have to worry about the metal showing through if you're using translucent paints. But as far as the tooth thing, any primer will, you know, the primer is going to micro etch the surface. It's going to cling. If you have a thicker layer of primer, you may get a little more tooth out of it. 
Hey, Sarduki, thank you for the resub. Yeah, I mean, I like two thin coats of primer, just like I t like two thin coats of base coat, so. Yeah, let's see here. So I think I'm going to use this, and it might look a little bit raspberry. This is actually a very pretty raspberry color. Um, so we got to get it, and I want to at least block in her highlights. And then I can always glaze a clear red over them. I probably want to go a little lighter even than that. But this is a start. Her hair is pretty simple. I mean, 28 millimeter hair is very simple usually. You want to just look at the masses of hair that you have coming out. Like this is a mass. It's just all coming out from under the hood. So I'm going to like just highlight it as a clump, I think. A lot of these are already sculpted as clumps. So as locks of hair. So I'll put a general highlight over a lot of it. To bring it out. Now I wonder if I take some of this clear red mix and put it over. Like I gotta be careful, like because that's gonna really pop. See that really makes her hair look red, red with a capital R. I should probably get some open succubus kiss to um, help me kind of blend this stuff in. But that's not bad. That brings in a lot more crimson into her hair. Uh, so I could just kiss. Let's just get some of this open. I like to keep everything open, kind of like you would on a wet palette um, if I'm working in an area. It's never bad to keep your colors, especially your highlights and your shadows, open. So if you have to do a spot wet blend, you can. Um, when I'm working fast like I do on stream for you guys, I often spot wet blend. I will often do a small, tiny little wet blend in an area if I'm trying to get a transition. So I like to have everything open so that I can do that. So we'll get our succubus kiss all mixed up. Put some water in it so I can glaze with it if I have to. Uh, I wonder what happens if I put my... Yeah, the light's okay. Uh, let's see here. She wore raspberry beret. Yep. Nomad Zeke, thank you for the sub, the resub. And Rax, thank you for the resub. Good. We're probably heading into like the 30s now, Justin, with our subs. Are we like getting... Uh, I think my soft count is 29. Oh, okay, um, okay. However, I obviously I, I do a total at the end of the stream to make sure. Right. So, yeah, we're almost a uh, third of the way to our next AMA, and we only just did one on Friday. That's fantastic, you guys. Lovely. Let's see. I just want to get... Because remember that, that cherry cola hair had some definite kind of scarlet highlights in it. Very red. So I'm trying to get some of that on her hair to make it look that way. I like this color that I'm getting. Um, it's actually darker and redder than Old West. Maybe a bit more magenta too. Old West doesn't have a lot of magenta in it. Mighty Jared. Or Jared. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah. Alrighty. Let's uh, use some of this ethereal stuff to get some lighter highlights. So I'm going over to my Phantom Glow Plus White. I'm kind of looking at where I want my highest highlights to be. I want to touch those areas very lightly. I can kind of pay attention to where the uh, light is falling on the figure. But if she um, if she's glowing all around her, then you're probably just going to get a general glow effect. You're still going to have shadows here and there, like in the depths around her face. But you're going to get general glow on a lot of different locks of hair. And I'm going to highlight with this uh, mix of Phantom Glow and White on everything. Skin, hair, everything. Black. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to suggest that, that, that the light is that color. Um, Sarduki, I darken in the sockets, put in white, and then do a pupil iris combo. Um, colored irises are extremely difficult on 28 millimeters unless they have gigantic eyes and or you artificially enlarge the socket. The painters I know who have done colored irises on 28 millimeters successfully and on almost everything um, are using paint to artificially enlarge the socket so that the eye is big enough to do so. Uh, so it works best on models that have very, very large eyes. For me, I, I do eyeballs by filling in the socket, then putting the white in and leaving a very thin, dark line around the, the socket. So 
if I decided to make her eyes glow, then I would have to wipe out this black, go back with white. But I would also lose a lot of expression. So you got to think about that. Because on 28mm, remember, you have to exaggerate everything. And if you don't exaggerate everything, you, you lose out on some things. So for her, right now I need to do eyebrow, eyebrows, however, because she does actually have enough room. And she does suggest them. Eyebrow. Um... So, uh, so yeah, so I have to really question what I'm doing here. Uh, if I did glowing eyes, she, it would be better if she had dark skin if I did glowing eyes, because then the effect would be more obvious. So I'm, I don't know. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing on the eyes yet, but since I was working with lining and filling in and I wanted to see what her expression was, uh, was like, I just filled them. But yeah, I'm not sure if I'll give her normal eyes yet. But I'm going to try to hit this brow ridge. Okay, so I blurfed a little bit on that, and that's okay. First, I'm going to take some water and see if I can just scrub it off. Yeah, I can. That's the benefit of working with thin paint, too, is that if you're working with paint that's thinned, like two to one, paint to water, uh, when you do make a blurf, it's easy to scrub it off. Like, it, it takes a little longer to set because the resins are, are thinned down. They're not as strong as they would be in a full-strength paint. So when they dry, they're, they, they stay... It's possible to pick them up with water a little bit longer than normal. Let's see. I want to get this shadow under the hair. The brow ridge is really quite defined right here. So I just needed to get a little bit more precise. Oh, thank you, New Encode, for the resub. Yeah, I mean, practice, I always tell people, practice on the, um, <clears throat> what is the eyeball monster? Um, arg, I can't remember, guys. You all, you all know. I've recommended it. It's, it's our version of the gibbering mouther, but it's different. Um, and it's not the beholder. It's the one that's all teeth and eyes. Practice your eyeballs on that because they have all sorts of big, big to little eyeballs. So you can start on the bigger eyeballs and then shrink and shrink and shrink and get your brush control up on eyes. Uh, see here. No, not, not the Beholder. Not the Beholder. The um, Faceless Horror. That's what it is. Faceless Horror. No, I would not recommend the Beholder. I would recommend the Faceless Horror. If you look it up, it's like six or seven bucks, I think even. Maybe less. Um, and it's all eyeballs and teeth. And it's got a crap ton. It's got to have a hundred eyeballs on that. It's sculpted by Julie Guthrie. Um, yes. Yes, exactly, real chibi. That is the model I recommend. It's what I used in my eyeball classes, uh, eyeball class at ReaperCon. Um, that thing's wonderful because if you don't have real good brush control for eyes, you can practice on the bigger eyeballs first and get your technique down until it looks good. Then you can start trying to do the smaller eyes. And as you go down, you'll get better at it. So it's a great training figure if you're trying to get better at eyes. I'm just putting some uh, clear red glaze on here. Trying to pick up these little strands. Trying to get these little bits down here. Trying to make her hair look like the awesome kind of gothy red color that I want it. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to paint the whole thing at once. Just paint, paint, use it as practice or even as warm up sometimes. Yeah, no, get it, scrying eye. The point is you don't paint the whole thing at once. The point is that you choose like 10, 10 eyeballs, you know, and you paint a couple of big ones, then you get a little smaller, and then you end up on the really small ones, and then you should be able to go and paint your eyeball on your figure. It, you can use it as a warm-up model or a practice model. Um, the bigger ones are also good for practicing doing colored irises. So it's a great practice model that I highly recommend. I don't recommend you paint the whole thing at once. I recommend you use it for practice over several days or weeks or even months. Um, it's just really useful that way. I think of it as a true practice model. And it's a, it's a cool monster that you could really just use any, any template with, really. I'm going to get in some more of this clear red mix. I'm just really tweaking the hair now until I get the color I want. And then make sure I bring the highlights up. Um, no, I don't. Somewhere I have most of the time practice models, any model is practice. 
But when you're specifically trying to trying to do eyes, that model is an exemplary practice model for eyeballs. You know, every once in a while a model will come along and I'll be like, oh, this model's really good to practice, you know, X. But in general, it's not like you have a hair monster out there so you can, like, you know, practice doing different hair. Um, so, yeah, it's just that, mo that model in particular is just very nice for, uh, for eyeballs. Otherwise, any model is a practice model. The only other thing that I've used as a specific example is if you're trying to get better at lining, grab a dragon that has, like, diagonal scales. Or a, a model like a giant, like the fire giants, have those triangular scale patterns on their armor. Um, lining around those is really good practice. Right, I mean, you just have to look for each model. It's just that there's seldom a model that gives you a lot of different things of one type, right? This is an exception because it's a model that's all eyes and teeth. So it would be a great practice piece for eyes and teeth. But even then, what we really need is a multi-headed humanoid hydra with multiple heads on it. <laughs> that's going a little bit too kingdom death, I think, for reapers. So, eh, no. <laughs> You might be able to find something like that in Kingdom Death, though. Hello, Sentimental. How are you? All right, so I'm kind of messing with her hair, trying to get a little bit more of the cherry red into it. Um, it's hard over here because this is such a... Uh... There we go. I think I got it. Um, these are so, like, linear. This is better sculpted hair in a way because it's... Uh... It's got more small strands in it to work with, so it's easier to paint it like as a mass and then highlight up some small strands, which is nice. I'm liking this. I'm really liking this hair color. I may have to use it um, elsewhere. Obviously, I need to find a... I was actually looking at a sci-fi uh, model on Mr. Lee's uh, miniatures the other day and thinking, hmm... I'm getting, uh, actually, Life Miniatures has a sale going on now, too, and they've got some awesome female uh, cyborg-type models or androids. Uh, that would be another good good place to use this hair color. <laughs> yeah, Hydra Naga. Yeah, yeah, that! You can do a Hydra Naga. Yeah, and it would be, that's why I said it would be Kingdom Death is, is super creepy. Kingdom Death has that dark, dark vibe to it that is cool in some minis and just a bit too over the top in others. So it's, it's more their shtick than ours. Just trying to put a little bit more of a spot highlight on some of these little strands to bring them out. Do you see how the hair stands out now and how it has that cherry cola color? I like it. Uh, so I'm going to go on to, uh, I think I'm going to actually table the skin for a second and work on the um, black here because the black will be easy and that'll bring out more I do like, um, David and I played Kingdom Death Monster, and, uh, it's, uh, the only thing I don't like about it is that I get attached to characters, and in Kingdom Death you really can't do that. Um, I'm gonna just re-block in my black here. Um, but otherwise, I think it's a very good game. It's certainly challenging. And I like the progression. It's just, I, I don't like the whole everybody, you know, dies kind of thing. That's the only thing. I think some of the models are beautiful. Some of them are just way over the top that I'm not into, but some of them are just beautiful. Yeah, it's true, Izzy. And yet, it still has some really good mechanics to it. Like, just looking at the mechanics of Kingdom Death, I, I had to admit, it is a very well put together game, although the rules sometimes have gigantic holes, and that's really kind of disappointing because it, in so many ways it's such a nice... It's such a more interesting game with its card mechanics and all that, and its AI monsters. I mean, there are other games that do that now, but um, I do like some of the uh, mechanics quite a bit. Although lately we've been playing Gloomhaven instead because I can get attached to my character in Gloomhaven. <laughs> all right, now we got to look at these boobs. Boobs, and these are maybe a little bit lopsided boobs, which means we must uh, carefully try to... Um, paint plastic surgery that so let's bring that highlight down this one has to get rounder 
when you paint it anything black it's going to just disappear to the eye so you have to kind of like look at it and question how you're going to bring out these details and usually you just want tiny touches of highlight i will often start with highlights that are broader than i really want um because then i can always minimize them so i want to bring out the form of the black there so i've highlighted just very very small yeah there's some really incredible design yeah for sure i mean we've got a lot of the kingdom death monster models and uh, although they can be a pain sometimes to put together there are some beautiful ones ah all right i need to get more highlight I need to decide if this, you need to decide if this cloth is shiny or not. If it's shiny, we're going to be doing, uh, yes, lopsided boobs are effective life. You are correct. Um, we have to decide if we're doing more general highlight on the top or if we're doing like reflective highlights, like this cloth is maybe a little bit um, sheer. So I might block in some things to that effect and see if I like it, in which case I need a brighter highlight here. Oh, I did need to bring her... Um, yeah, I don't know if I like that under reflection thing going on. Usually here I'm just playing. I'm playing with thinned paint in very small amounts. And so I'm not going to create any blockiness or blobbiness um, on the figure because all of my layers of paint are so thin that they're really smooth. Um, it lets me play with highlight placement and decide what kind of effect I want uh, is a useful thing. I am going to get that lower lip. And just dab it in. With her expression and her face, I actually am seeing echoes of Cersei Lannister. <laughs> she might be evil, guys. She might be evil. She's kind of got that pouty lip thing and the... Um shape of the face and the hair though I didn't make her blonde still playing here if I lose that bottom edge to the lip I'll try to bring it back to define it yeah let's see here I'm just as you can see I'm just bopping around too guys I'm just working on everything at once I've got all my colors open so I can sit here and kind of go back and forth and I can try to decide you know textures for some stuff like am I going for shiny cloth or am I not I think I'm not going to go for shiny cloth I want to do more of a general highlight um if I decide that I want the highlights on the black to read more like my phantom glow then I need to mix up some real saturated phantom glow so I want to put just a couple drops over here and I want to throw some water in there to make it really transparent almost glazy like and use that to highlight first so like the highlight here on her uh, dress is uh, just really coming across um, white because it only had a little phantom glow in it so if I want more phantom glow color in my light sourcing I've got to bring that full phantom glow in and paint that over the top of those highlights and suggest some of it over here again when you're doing black even though your highlights should be very small you can always start them bigger and then shrink them by doing black glazes or by bringing your black back in um, yeah this is working actually pretty well Hmm. Okay. Just looking at what I'm doing, kind of getting, uh, getting a feel for everything. I'm liking this now more that I have more phantom glow, uh, highlight up here. Now that's probably too broad of a highlight for black. So I have to stop and think about how I'm going to change it. Probably I need to uh, make it a little bit more diffused and less of a hard edge going off that area. And then I need to bring my black down a little bit more on this upper edge. I need to make sure that my highlights are very small in order for the dress to look black and they've gotten very large here. So this is going to look teal and not black unless I do something about it. 
So I'm going to actually put a black glaze over it and see if I can knock those all down. And then re-highlight. And sometimes when you're highlighting black, you will need to do this. You will need to go back and forth a bit. Um, when you are highlighting a black area, it should be 75% black. At the most, or at the very least, two-thirds of it needs to be pure black. Um, unless you're working with your first highlight being very dark. Or you're looking with a, working with a reflective cloth that changes some of the uh, some of the rules. But in general, for something to look black, it needs to stay black. So I'm going to work with kind of layering my black in, leaving just a little bit of a highlight here, and then I'm going to come back in. Now it looks a lot more black. See, we took down that teal. And if I'm going to use my Phantom Glow for highlighting, then I also need to do it places like up here, up on top of her hood, right? On the edge there to bring out, bring out that highlight. Let me see here. I want to do just a little bit more. So just like we're getting there, it's all right. Yeah, glazes are magic, for sure. They are uh, awesome magic. Yep. Just trying to figure out how I'm going to make this look better. Yeah. And you may go back and forth a lot on black. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I go back and forth between glazes and you know, and layering and trying to smooth it in with uh, various forms of blending. You know, taking it down to almost black but not quite black so that I can still get the effect I want the higher the highlight on black cloth the more shiny the black cloth is going to look so if we want this to be a softer rougher black cloth we don't want to bring the highlight up very much um, so we'll see I'm going to try to bring it up just a little getting a lot of paint off my brush here and I'm going to concentrate on the top kind of do a little bit of stippling with this uh yeah, it's got a little bit, a little bit light there. I don't want it too light. I don't want it to look like it's shiny. Taking things up to white almost always makes them look shiny. So we got to ask ourselves, too much, too much? And if so, then we have to glaze. And this is the trouble with working from um, black to white. It's, uh, it's, it's a long, arduous process that uh, you may need to tweak for a while until it looks about the way you want it to be. Just make sure you're consistent with your level of highlighting. Don't make your cloth really shiny in one area and then not shiny in another. Um, that's looking okay right now. I'm all right with that. That's cool. So now skin. Then we'll decide what we're doing with the eyes, maybe, if I feel like it. All right, so more back to our kind of taupey, weird mixture skin tone. I want to highlight the cheekbones. Kind of put a line down to the upper lip and hit that highlight on the upper lip. This can be the hard one because uh, 28 millimeter figures don't have much of an upper lip at the best of times. Yeah, she looks very haughty, haughty and royal. I think she's like Cersei Lannister. I think I'm going for uh, for that sort of personality. I need more eyebrows on the left. My eyebrow is very thin there. I need to come back with it. And I'm just using um, pure black for the eyebrows too. I'm not trying to make the red work. The reason is that the eyebrows are so thin that uh, the red is not going to uh, come off. Like when you have a very tiny detail, if you try to introduce color into it, but it's dark, like you try to use a dark red or a dark green, it's just going to look black because it's so tiny. You, It doesn't have a big enough surface. Remember, the more surface something takes up, the more the color will come through and be very visible and poppy to your eye. So when you're doing tiny little highlights of, of even like, say, this phantom glow, um, if you're doing them over black, it may come off more like that they're white. They, you may lose some of the color. 
that's why I diffused the color here to kind of bring in that phantom glow um, shade. Uh, so it's, you got a, the smaller you are like eyebrows and, and the irises of eyes at this scale, like I said, it's, it just be dark. It doesn't really translate very well. Um, when you start getting up to 54, especially the 72 millimeter eyes or around that size of eye, that's when you can really do colored irises and have them look right. So it's all, uh, relative. Let me see here. Give her a little chin. So now we have a base skin tone of the tan skin, but I'm starting to highlight with my mixture of tan skin and phantom glow and white. Um, pretty happy about where my everything is. I do need to fix this eye. It got a little bit wide. The brow came down really low on this one. So I'm going to try, try to put more skin tone in there. Sometimes it's the sculpt too. Sometimes there's just uh, like this has a strand of hair and it makes this area difficult to paint. So you can work around it as much as you can. All right, now I'm gonna take my full on spectral glow or phantom glow plus white and I'm gonna try to put highlights on this skin and see what I can do. One thing I'm probably not doing, you'll notice, is putting any red tones into the skin. Red implies blood, implies alive. So putting blush on a undead model can be very counterproductive. Um, sometimes you'll be able to carry it off with vampires, for example. You can often carry it off. At least they drink blood, so they actually have blood. Um, but with ghostly models, it I mean you may not work very well. When you do it, you may be like, oh wait, this doesn't look right, and I don't know why. And I just got a bit of her forehead showing through there. Going to get the tip of her nose. If you can, get the nostrils on either side of the nose. There usually is at least an attempt to kind of sculpt them. And that can help um, broaden the nose so it's not just a dash on the face. Uh, let's see. Going to bring that down. Going to hit that chin. That I got a little bit rough with, so I'm going to fix it. That's a little bit too rough, too rough, too too bold. So I'm gonna mix in a little bit of this. This is all just little micro adjustments on the face. I got a little bold with my highlight here, so I'm gonna fix it just by putting some uh, tan skin over it. Maybe bringing in my tan skin mix to soften it up. I don't want to lose my highlight on the upper lip, and I also want to highlight along the lower edge of the jaw. That I'm definitely getting too. Uh, too stark up here. Need to soften this. There, it's a little better. I'm only really keeping tan skin in the shadows so that I get kind of a fleshy color, but I'm bringing in that phantom glow for highlights. Alrighty. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're doing, right? You'd maybe do a vampire differently. I wanted a ghost who was, like, coming to life, but she her skin is still going to be reflecting all this phantom energy around it, so that's why we're going with some phantomy energy. I also think I'm going to bring in some of the spectral or some of the phantom glow here more than I thought I was going to because I kind of like the look of using it here and there um, where the light is coming up, so I don't want to lose it all. It's very easy for these small highlights to just read like white, even though they have spect or phantom glow in them. So sometimes you want to bring that in a little bit stronger. Just kind of figuring this out, kind of adjusting skin tones. I haven't done this particular mixture of colors before, but I like it. And we want to make sure that we pop the highlights. I'm glad you guys like it. Yeah, it's a definitely different, right? It's, a, it's it's thinking a lot about character of the model is what leads you to this, is um, how to get like certain effects, like how to make red hair look cold, how to, how to, you know, highlight with your glow color so that you always have a little bit of it and it tends to make the skin look more ghostly, things like that. Um, 
I'm just going to bring up the highlights a little bit on her hair. Wherever I think I've gotten too warm. Um, but at least we've got that counter color. We've got complementary now. We've got red, red and, uh, and green pretty much, or, or red and teal. Um, so it works. So she's doing pretty well. Let's see if I can do that little tiny highlight on the lower lip. I wonder if I can. That's always dicey for me. Like, in fact, I think I'm going to maybe switch brushes. Let's see here. Also, I'm thinning my paint down because to have it come off right... see here I'm gonna get close to pure white I think I am gonna use a little bit of my red and my succubus kiss in there it doesn't take much you don't have to come up to pure white to have the dots look white especially when they're surrounded by dark color so let's see what I can do and I'm probably thinning this about close to one to one the thing is you you want it to be strong enough that you can do tiny dots um, and that can be difficult. And that's why we're adding white, a lot of white, because pure white is very opaque, even when thinned, uh, to a one-to-one. -one. And so with this, we'll get something that's watery enough to come off the tip of the brush with a very precise dot. Um, you forgot to chat, Arcane Void. Yeah, I can usually tell when I'm doing a, an interesting episode because you guys all shut up. <laughs> Let me see if I can get even closer here and possibly even more focused in. Let me see what I can do. I do love my camera. All right, let's see. That's pretty good. Ah, come on. Come back, colors. Come back. Let's see. Does my skin make it look like... No, she blew, blues out, blues out when my skin goes. There we go, camera. Adjust, adjust. All right. Let's see here. Tiny little pink blobs. I do want, okay, so this is, I've got about half. I want to test before I do it. So let's go down here. Yeah, I can do tiny little dots. Good. Quickly go up before my brush dries. No, that didn't come out strong enough. Let's see if I can get it just a little bit stronger. You want to definitely pre-dot though. Pre-dot. The trouble is when you pre-dot, then your paint is already drying in your brush. Uh-oh, too much. Too much. But I can fix this. I at least have the dots where I want them. So now I can take some of my succubus kiss and pure clear red and I can glaze it over the bottom part of those white dots. Sometimes this is easier than making your dots tiny. So let me get some glaze mixed up and see if I can do just a little tiny touch in on the bottom part of those. To the point where I even need more magnification at this point, guys. Yeah, so I kind of wiped them out. They're kind of there. She has a highlight. This is why it's so hard. It's just a small surface. It's like it's like trying to do pupils and irises. It's very, very difficult. Some people seem to be able to do it magically, like Jen. Jen can always do it magically. Jennifer Haley. Yeah, I got it too much. Too much wiped out, but I've still got a highlight, so I'm okay with that. Alrighty, let's try this again. It's so hot to, it's so hard to get those tiny little dots right where you want them, and I kind of have one still up there. You need them so tiny, so tiny, and then sometimes it's just like, well, yeah, okay, that's actually okay. I still didn't do like tiny little dot, but I do have lip color on the underside, so. I'm pretty okay with that right now. I don't know. Maybe I'll glaze it again. Often this is one of my biggest challenges if I try to do this on a figure. Like I said, some people find it so simple, it seems. 
And then I try to do it and I'm just like, nope. And I like doing it on models with um, larger lips. It's very fun to do the lip texture like um, Dark Elf Dude here. See his lips? Let's see. There we go. Now you can see the little fine lines and texture. Rawr, he says. He's pretty creepy. I like my Dark Elf. He's actually done. Um, I need to uh, get him mounted on my little plinth here. He's got his tattoo. He's got his little hair tie and his jewelry. He's got the dragon tattoo on the back of him, too. Um, he's got a stronger light source on the front. I wanted to really do a light source uh, frontal and then have him kind of fading into shadow in the back. So that's why the back is a little darker than the front. Um, but yeah, so bigger, bigger bust. And he's a 1 12th bust, so he's a small bust. It's much easier to do the things like the lip highlights. Yeah, I decided it's the um, Hera Models does academic line of busts, which are very simple, like Elf Dude, um, which are good practice. And that's why he's made with one wide eye and one uh, squinty eye. Um, so you can practice both. Uh, and the wide eye was hard to do. I will get it. And yeah, I've, I painted him as a dark elf because I, uh, decided I wanted to do, I'm, I'm really liking painting dark skin tones lately. So I've been playing, uh, thanks to Sodoma. Yeah, I used it. Actually, I did a, um, a tutorial on that for my Patreon. So for those of you who are not on my Patreon, it is patreon.com slash painting big. Uh, and I do a lot of PDFs and videos on stuff like that. Um, fun things. I, I do use a lot of larger models or busts. Um, often because it's easier to kind of illustrate so you can see it. Uh, but yeah, so I'm pretty happy. Let's see if I can make her eyes like red or something. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, if I want to make her eyes red. I'm going to try to at least do the whites though. And really, I just want to leave a little bit A black around it. Oh no, too much flood blorf. That's because I'm using really thin paint to do this, and I need to use thicker paint. Do, do, do. And I could learn from my mistake and mix up some thicker paint, but no, I'm lazy. I'm not. I'm gonna try to make this work anyway. <laughs> I'm efficient. Yeah, Rathmore, and they're not that expensive. The Elf Bust was on sale. Um, and it's a, it's a smaller bust, so if you're looking to get into bust painting, but you don't want to have a, something huge and complicated, eh, that did not work. Scrubbing off the eyeball. Um, then I would recommend those. Uh, Elf, Elf was a really nice uh, study, and he's very gaunt, so he's interesting to paint. I'm going to just mix in a little bit more white, so I get a little bit of a heavier paint to get her eyes mocked in. Yep, blorfs. Blorfs. There we go. So that should thicken up my white and make it more solid. And then I can come in and get those eyes. But yeah, there's so many nice busts out there. Some of the FER busts also have some uh, some simpler stuff as, as well as complex. There's a, there's a couple of companies that do like more academic busts simpler ones um for classes a lot of the time because you know if you're teaching as a painter you're teaching people to paint skin or something working on a bust is really useful all right so i've got her eyes where i've got my lighter white inside of the darker rim and that's kind of what you're looking for now if i want to really um make her eyes brighter i have to keep at it and you want to use, the key here is not much paint on your brush. Like, if you have too much paint on your brush, you're going to fill in this whole socket and it's not going to work. But if you have very little paint on your brush, you can keep going over that area and keep the rim around the eye so that the eye is still there so you can still see it. If you tried to do a, a white uh, without this dark rim, it would look, it would, it would fade right into the skin tone, right? So... Yeah, yeah, Julie's busts are nice and simple, too. They're going to be good practice pieces. Rawr, she says. Now we could try to do her with red eyes and see. I don't know. You know what, Dragon Eye? Oh, it's all where your enthusiasm is, as far as I'm concerned. If you were enthused and really excited by big, complicated busts, then rock it. I mean, you don't have to go the slow and steady way. 
it just might, you know, it might set you up. You might have to do a little more work down the road if you uh, get, or get in over your head. But other than that. But some people, um, some people learn best by getting in over their head. So, I mean, if it's you, rock it. You should always rock you. Always do you. Alrighty. Very ghostly, very pale, but still, you can see the skin tone. She's a little more, it's a little more vis visible in person. Yeah, I don't know if I want to do a red eyes. I mean, it would contrast. Hey there, strange. I am going to take some of my clear red and see if I can make her red eyes. And see how they look. Oh, thank you for the hundred raccoons there, Rax. <laughs> what is Reaper going to do with a hundred raccoons? I'm, I'm afraid. I'm very afraid. Yeah, I don't know if I like the red eyes. They're just not going to pop enough. Do you think that's enough to run a studio? Haha! <laughs> could a hundred raccoons run a studio? Probably badly, but they could. Well, you know, we aren't exactly professionals. Is that the new hashtag? Not exactly professionals? I thought it was just not professionals. Well, you know, I mean, we're going to be slightly better now that we've got a hundred raccoons to run our studio. Oh, okay, you're right. Hmm. I blurfed that one. When I, I hope this is reassuring you guys that, you know, to see that I blurf all the time and I just go back and just redo it. Um, there does come a point after probably, like, maybe if I was futzing on this for an hour where I would just give up and come back to it the next day um, if I couldn't get the eye where I wanted it. But in general, um, it's just patience. And it's not really even patience. It's just like, oh, I messed up. I'm going to redo it. Just do it. I mean, don't think of it as patience. I hate referring to patience because so many people have already talked themselves into the narrative that they have no patience. And it's usually not true. But that's why I avoid using the term patience and saying that you need it for miniature painting because I don't find that that is true. It seems like when you tell somebody that a hobby needs patience that 80% of your market for that hobby just disapparates because they're like, oh, I don't have patience. It's like, in reality, if you're enjoying yourself, you probably have infinite patience. Or close. Eh, I went too, st too strong on that nostril. So, faces are a lot of tweaking if you want them to look really, really good. Unless you get lucky right off the bat, or you've got a really well-sculpted figure right off the bat. Um, like the one that I did for my, my video on it, uh, where she just, she just came together super fast. Her face was really well sculpted. Um, this is the Elvin, this is a, uh, dualist model in, in metal that I did a recent tutorial on. Uh, yeah, I'm going back to the white eyes. I think I, I like those better than the red eyes. All right. This, this eye is very hard to get to because of the lock of hair and the nose. It's hard to get the right angle on it. But yeah, when you're tuning a face and trying to make it look where you want it. Well, there is such a thing as over uh, overworking stuff too, um, image. But usually when it comes down to fixing, it's just isolating what you did wrong. And usually it's not like the brush stroke itself. It's like how much paint you've got on your brush or how thick or thin your paint is. I think a lot of people um, just think about fixing the brush stroke and they don't address the cause of the problem, which is your brush or your paint load or your paint consistency. And that's why people think that they can't fix their mistakes. That's why I, I really advocate, you know, doing some experiments where you thin down paint to various levels and you load up your brush various ways and then you unload the bejeebus out of it and see what you can do. Just try drawing thin lines and dots. Pretend you're doing SOSs. And that's going to give you a better understanding so that when you see a blorf, you will not just be like, oh, I blorfed that. You will instead be like, oh, I blorfed that because there's too much paint on my brush. Or I blorfed that because my paint is too thin and there's too much on my brush. It's that sort of thing. Um, yeah, he did. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, from the fanatics. You need to learn patience. Learn patience? Great. How long will that take? Yeah. 
And these days, it seems like people use that, I hate to say it, but people tend to use that as an excuse not to try something. Like, they're like, oh, well, I don't have any patience, I couldn't do that, you know, and that's their excuse for why not to try. And it's, so it's like, I've gone away from saying that mini painting will teach you patience, although it will, um, or from uh, ever saying that it takes patience, because I don't want, I don't find that's necessarily true in the truest sense of the word. Patience kind of implies sticking to something, even though you're not enjoying yourself. And I think with mini painting, we're, so much of it is that you're just enjoying yourself. You should never get so stressed out about it that you're not enjoying yourself. And at that point, you don't need patience because if you're enjoying yourself, it's just like watching a Netflix show. You're enjoying yourself, so you don't need patience to watch a TV show, right? Unless it's a terrible TV show, then you need patience. This uh, accenting her jawline a little bit more. Pretty much liking that. Liking the dead eyes look. Doing a little bit more highlighting here. Get a more highlight here. More of that dead energy. I think she's looking pretty good. I mean, she could get smoother for sure. Ah, I lost my black. But again, this is just like, how far do I want to push it? Am I trying to make this competition model? Am I trying to do it for, for a studio? Am I going to send it to Ron? You know, how good does it have to be? Um, or am I just painting for me? Sometimes that could be the worst if I'm painting it for me because I actually want it to look really good. Yeah, there we go. So for those of you who are my patrons, I am uh, I am probably going to put Dark Elf up uh, actually for sale. Um, so if you, uh, patrons always get first, per, patrons $10 and above get first first dibs, and then if they don't want it, then I'll, I'll offer it to all patrons. But um, I, uh, I like him a lot, um, and he was a fun experiment, uh, and I figure he might benefit somebody else more than me if you guys want a picture in front of you of like the skin tones and the tattoo work and the eyeballs. Um, it could be nice to collect pieces from some of your favorite painters. Often they will take commissions. It may not be cheap, but it does give you, you know, an example directly that you can look at in person when you're trying to improve your art. So um, David has a very large collection. Well, very large. I mean, probably a couple dozen models um, from various people that he admired as painters that he studied when he was trying to get better and having the piece in front of you so that you can look at it under magnification and see how they did a highlight or see what if the, there are colors in the shadows that you might not have seen in a picture that's all very useful so yeah i think i'm like this i like this ghosty what do you think justin ghosty good it looks looks pretty good looks pretty good pretty good yeah she's neat she's definitely coming in with the ethereal energy thing i think i love the raspberry color that you talked <laughs> the about the hair <laughs> You know, HM Road Dog, there was, I knew a guy, Phil Esterly used to say that same thing is, is like, there was, there was all, infinite colors of brown, sky brown, grass brown, <laughs> and all, he was famous for using a ton of brown on his minis. There's nothing wrong with painting a, with a lot of neutrals. Yeah, I think she's cool. I think I got the effect that I wanted from her, where it's obvious that she's ghosty, but that she's coming, you know, she's starting to, to form up, um, and become a, a force. So... I do like how she's turning out, which is good. And and really, I just need to do the blends on the back now, you know. But we spent, uh, what, three days on the front? So about four and a half hours. Maybe a little less because we waste time here and there and have uh, Kiri's uh, or we talk about other stuff or I show uh, stuff like that. Uh, I guess we are five minutes from end. I guess I could go and uh, use my white to uh, bring out these areas that are close to the uh, ether. And I could do that up here on the, work more on the hood too. And my white's still pretty thin, so I can uh, suggest tendrils. It's not showing up great on the camera because of my backdrop, sadly. But I'm trying to bring out more white on that area.
Yeah, sky's clear. You're right. It is sometimes if you put your colors on paper next to each other, you can see how they work. Even then, sometimes you'll get in trouble because when you change the uh, ratio, like, you know, like if you're going to put them on paper, think about where they're going to go on the model and also make sure that um, like the mod, the color that is going to be just an accent color you put in a very small spot on the paper instead of doing a big swatch of it because you want you want it to look like it's going to look on the model and if you just put three swatches next to each other and they're the same size but then they're not going to take up the same area on the model um, you won't be it won't be as useful for you as it might have been so think about that too when doing swatches Just bringing up some white near the hole there in her claw. Oh, the Landschnecker, definitely. Well, and they say Vikings were pretty garish, too. I mean, bright colors, because it was so hard to get bright colors and make them, like, stay, like, as far as permanency in the claw, um, I imagine that bright colors were very coveted by a lot of old civilizations. And that uh, we tend to make everything more drab. Maybe a mistake. Historically speaking. Alrighty. More white, more white, more white. Getting there. I need to bring more white up here. Do do do. But yeah, so I saw a couple of you say that you wouldn't have thought of doing it this way. So yeah, this is a way that you can kind of spice up your ghosts if you uh, if there's enough humanity or enough form in them that you can play off of that. Um, this can be an interesting way to make things look uh, a little bit more engaging. Not just all spirit energy. Although certainly everything being spirit energy is perfectly legal on any grunts or ghost things that you have to paint like 20 of um, but yeah but if you want some of your ghostly leaders or special characters to stand out having part of them coming like coming in corporeal could be uh, pretty neat I'm gonna come up and add in some pale color up here on the hood yeah Yeah, exactly, because it was expensive for getting uh, colors. I'm going to back up so you guys can see her in, in t total, so to speak. Kind of neat, I think. Alrighty, and it is just about 11. And we started on time, even if we had to spend a little time troubleshooting. So, Justin, I think we'll actually end on time. Uh, do you have a raid for us? Yeah, we should raid uh, Zambies. Gergi said that Zambies is painting a Ral Partha metal dragon. Oh, wow. That's old school. Zambies doing old school, guys. Wow. Awesome. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, let's do that. That sounds lovely. Oh, and uh, just so y'all know, uh, after Michael's stream, I'm probably going to be doing a private stream today on my uh, my Twitch. So twitch.tv slash painting big um, after Crow's Nest, just so you know. Because uh, I'm trying to get Twitch affiliate. Any help any help I can get is uh, appreciated. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. I'm sure you... I, I hope you had fun. I actually think she looks pretty cool. So I'm pretty happy with her. I'll probably finish up the back because it's not hard. It's just like doing the black fade on here. I don't have to do it. And, and the rock glowy effect. Um, and then figuring out some basing. If I want to just put her in a graveyard or if I want to put her in the water. I haven't decided yet. Uh, fantastic. That's cute, Vidarian. <laughs> oh, yeah, usually, um, Rax, we don't usually do a free. Uh, it's, uh, we just did the AMA, um, on Friday, and that we always have a giveaway for our AMA, but then we have to build up enough subs to do another big AMA and giveaway. And we're trying for a hundred subs total this time, so that I can give away something big. Big and exciting. We are doing them oh. during the month of July for Gurgi's birthday. Yeah, Gurgi that's true. That's stuff. true on Fridays, right? 
Correct. Yes, on Fridays. So you hashtag free on Fridays. Free Fridays. Woohoo! Um, uh, Xgrave. Um, it'll be twitch.tv slash painting big. And that's my Patreon is patreon.com slash painting big. So it's all painting big when I'm doing my own private stuff. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to paint. Ten huh? seconds. Two, what? Ten seconds? Oh, wow. Raid incoming. All right, guys. All have right, fun. Guys. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See you today. There we go.